Rather than writing a more positive letter about our salvation, Jude decided to write an appeal instead, a vital appeal for people to contend for the faith. Jude verses 3 and 4 say this. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. So Jude says that the faith was once and for all delivered to the saints. It isn't something which can change or which can be added to. It was definitively delivered. There is such a thing as orthodoxy, a definitive body of doctrine that has been passed down to us. So the false teaching, which Jude outlines a little bit more in the rest of the letter, includes the idea of changing our gospel, our message. Indeed, he says, the false teachers want to pervert grace into a license for immorality and undermine the lordship of Jesus as our master, that is, as the one with rights over how we behave. So contending here is in the context of false teaching. As in Philippians, it is contending for something, the faith. It means not changing our doctrine and not changing our moral and ethical applications of it, which certain people would like us to. In such a situation, believers need to stand firm and do something in the face of that threat to a right understanding of God's grace to us as sinners. But what is that something? Is it uh, some kind of struggle against difficulty? Yes. But what? Is it violent resistance? Execution of heretics? Public denouncements? Well, Jude actually applies his own teaching at the end of his letter, so we can see what he thinks it means. He says in verses 17 to 23, but you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. So here, Jude defines ways of contending for the faith, as some worldly people cause divisions. So while some are, as he says, grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires, loud mouth boasters showing favouritism to gain advantage, Jude 16, what should we do? Verses 20 to 23 tell us how we are to contend for the faith. Firstly, build yourselves up in our most holy faith. Note that interesting description. It is a holy faith, a truth which leads to godliness. We are to build ourselves up in this. So the immediate focus is not on something that we do towards others, the heretics. Jude wants us to look to ourselves in this situation and edify one another with the truth. Second, pray in the Holy Spirit. We can pray in the Spirit, unlike those that he describes as devoid of the Spirit, see the previous verse, whose prayers are not in accordance with the will of God, the Holy Spirit. 
But all things we do should be suffused with prayer rather than trusting to our own strategies and strengths. Thirdly, keep ourselves in the love of God. In the sense that God loves those who obey him. If you love me, said Jesus, you will keep my commandments. John chapter 14 verse 15. So keep yourselves in that love and live in a way that is pleasing to God. Again, this is something we must do with respect to ourselves in order to be contending rather than something focused directly on our opponents as such. We contend for the faith by keeping ourselves in the love of God. Fourthly, wait for the mercy of the Lord to eternal life. The way out of the struggle will come when Jesus returns or when he decides to act to mercifully deal with the opposition. So there are four components here to contending for the faith, all of them focused on our own personal and corporate spiritual responsibility, focused on ourselves, keeping watch over ourselves. Then, and only then, does Jude say how we should behave towards the false teachers, or more accurately, towards those who are affected by the false teachers. Jude's strategy for contending for the faith is very different to worldly methods of fighting for what you want. His approach is characterised by mercy. A. Having mercy on those who doubt. Not harshness, but be merciful. People faced with persuasive and passionate and powerful false teaching are often fooled, and they often doubt. They don't know what to think in a time of confusion. The way we contend for the true faith must be merciful to these people and attract them to the true faith rather than putting them off it. Waverers can be reclaimed with mercy. B. Saving others by snatching them out of the fire. Now that sounds like vigorous action which helps individuals avoid plunging wholeheartedly into the heresy. Do we even think about snatching such people from the fire of hell as part of our contending? Maybe we think of that as evangelism, but even those who seem to be heading to perdition can be saved by the way that we contend for the truth. Does this motive come through in the way that we speak about things? Are we loving in our motives and merciful in our attitudes? C. Showing mercy with fear to those tainted by the sins promoted by the heretics. Again, we show love and kindness to people caught up in false teaching and living. I think mercy mixed with fear there is about making sure that as we do work with such people, we don't get caught up in sin ourselves. The sort of entangling sin being promoted by the false teachers, which is not easy to escape. We may think that we are clear and sound, but it is too easy if we're focusing on other people's sins all the time, not to notice our own fallenness in the same areas, or to proudly assume that we are immune to temptation and become ensnared. The danger of not contending is great, but contending and then stumbling or falling into sin or error ourselves is also a huge danger. So we need to be looking to God who can present us blameless, giving glory to him for all of this, not patting ourselves on the back for being so orthodox and sound and godly. The fall has left none of us entirely straight. We are all bent towards sin. And that means orthodoxy is a gift from God and not a human work in which we can boast. So here's some questions for reflection on today's passage in, in Jude. Firstly, 
How can we be sure that we are looking to God to keep us from stumbling, as Jude says in verse 24, rather than trusting to our own strength and soundness? Secondly, how can we build ourselves up in our most holy faith when false teaching invades the church? And thirdly, how can we show mercy to those who doubt without making it look like the Bible is unclear on the doctrines and practices that are under attack from the false teachers?